People always ask me how I think humanity will react if we discover life somewhere out there in the universe. Whether it's bacteria under the surface of Mars, a biosignature of alien life in the atmosphere of another world, or a radio signal from another civilization. Will our civilization lose its collective mind and have a temper tantrum on a global scale? Will we become one of those purge planets from Rick and Morty? Will the discovery suddenly end all religion as we wait for guidance from our new alien overlords? Will we gather together as a species to present a common front to whatever cosmic horrors await us beyond the solar system? In my opinion, if I could sum up the collective response in a single word, it would be meh. This question has come my way quite a bit in the last few weeks thanks to a statement from NASA's Jim Green in a recent article in the UK's Telegraph newspaper. Of course, their article is behind a paywall, but CNN has an article about their article, so I'll make a video referencing CNN's article about the Telegraph's article. Dr. Green said that the discovery of life on Mars would be revolutionary. It'll start a whole new line of thinking, and he doesn't think we're prepared for the results. Although the tone of this statement sounds like he's doubting our intestinal fortitude to handle the mind-bending repercussions of knowing there are bacteria doing bacteria stuff deep down in the rocks on Mars, what he's really saying is that the scientific community isn't practically ready to deal with the evidence, to genetically sample the little guys, and figure out if they're related to us. There's no rover on Mars that could do that. There are no plans to build a rover to do that. If I served you hot soup, but no spoon, I think we can agree that you're not prepared to eat this soup. When it comes to studying life on Mars, NASA is not prepared, but it should be. It sounds like a good priority. Get on that, NASA. But when it comes to discovering evidence of life in the universe, we've actually done it many times before. We've been almost certainly wrong, but it happened, and we saw how people reacted. In 1877, the astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli used a modern telescope to study the surface of Mars, mapping out the features that he could see. He observed brighter and darker areas, which he identified as seas and continents. He saw what he thought were channels on the surface of Mars, which he called canali, Italian for channels. This name stuck, and people started to think that meant there were large-scale canals, like the Suez Canal, on the surface of Mars. This idea was taken to the extreme in 1894 when astronomer Percival Lowell built a powerful new observatory near Tucson, Arizona, and one of his favorite targets was the planet Mars. Lowell saw the canals everywhere on Mars and mapped them out in extreme detail. He eventually published a book on Mars in 1895 with his illustrations of the planet and the complex set of canals that carried water from the planet's poles to the drier equator. In 1906 came Mars and its canals. In 1909, he published Mars as the abode of life. This led to a revolution in science fiction with the classic H.G. Wells book, The War of the Worlds, where Martians flee their dying planet and rampage ours. And of course, this was turned into a terrifying radio play in 1938 by Orson Welles. Actually, that time people did freak out a little, but that's only because they thought that alien spacecraft had actually landed and were disintegrating people on Halloween. Edgar Rice Burroughs of Sherlock Holmes fame published his first John Carter of Mars book in 1912, envisioning the Martians as green-skinned inhabitants of what they called Barsoom. Over the next 30 years, he wrote another 10 books in the series, helping to form our modern idea of extraterrestrials. People's imaginations soared, but society held together, because the results were inconclusive. Some people looked through the eyepiece and saw canals, others didn't, and there was no way to get better evidence until the first spacecraft could fly to Mars. Anyway, people had other priorities like world wars. But when the spacecraft did fly to Mars, they proved there weren't canals there. The planet was cold, dry, and nearly airless, and yet the controversy over life on Mars wouldn't be settled. In 1976, when NASA's Viking landers became the first spacecraft to ever land on the surface of Mars, they found inconclusive evidence of life. In addition to the traditional rock, dust, and atmospheric sampling instruments, the Viking spacecraft were equipped with a special experiment called the Labeled Release Life Detection Experiment. 
The two spacecraft, thousands of kilometers apart, scooped up samples of Martian regolith and then exposed them to nutrients and warmer temperatures. Shortly after the experiment began, carbon dioxide gas was detected in the chamber of the experiment, evidence that microbes were eating up the nutrients. Scientists on Earth ran the robotic experiment several times on both landers and got four positive results with five varied controls to account for possible errors. According to the scientists working with the experiments, this was proof positive of life on Mars. So what happened? Nothing. The scientists who made the discovery agreed that although it was an intriguing discovery, the results couldn't be verified since the experiment was sitting on the surface of Mars, and it would be extremely difficult and expensive to run it again. Other scientists disagreed with the result and proposed inorganic methods that could explain the outcome. And they've been hard at work for the last 40 years, going over and over the data, examining every other possibility and ruling them out. In fact, about a week ago, one of the scientists, Gilbert Levin, wrote an opinion piece in Scientific American titled, I'm convinced we found evidence of life on Mars in the 1970s. Levin's convinced. Are you convinced? How convinced? This is the problem. Spirit and Opportunity found evidence that liquid water once flowed on Mars. Curiosity took that another step and proved that water was on the surface for long periods of time. Wherever we find water on Earth, we find life. The results on Mars are inconclusive, painstaking, and take time to unfold. Curiosity and orbiting spacecraft overhead detected a whiff of methane in the thin Martian atmosphere. Methane is a byproduct of bacterial life, but it could also be a byproduct of volcanic activity. The results remain inconclusive. And anyway, you've got better things to do with your time than to wait for scientists to get to the bottom of this. Science is a slow process that builds up its evidence carefully, step by step. It could take decades for the right answer to slowly be revealed. And by that time, people have already had a long time to come to grips emotionally with ideas as astonishing as evolution or the Big Bang. Do you remember when the President of the United States announced the discovery of life on Mars in 1996? We'll talk about that in a second, but first I'd like to thank Jeffrey Reutemann, Richard Gould, and the rest of our 832 patrons for their generous support. Educational content should be freely available to anyone in the world, and the patrons make this possible. Join our community at patreon.com slash universe today and get in on the action. In 1984, a meteorite hunting team of scientists in Antarctica discovered a two kilogram rock that clearly came from space. When they sliced it open, they detected trace gases that exactly matched the composition of the Martian atmosphere detected by the Viking landers. Around 16 million years ago or so, a huge asteroid impacted Mars and blasted the rock into space. Then it traveled through the solar system until it entered the Earth's atmosphere about 13,000 years ago. Electron microscope images from the meteorite showed tiny features that looked like fossils of some kind of life form. They also found globules of carbonate and organic molecules, but the most compelling were tiny magnetic crystals that can form inside colonies of bacteria. The scientists published a paper in 1996 announcing their discovery of fossilized evidence of life on Mars, and the result was exciting, but controversial. Scientists explained that these little wormies could actually be the result of a process used to prepare the samples for an electron microscope. There were non-biological processes that could explain the carbonates and organic molecules. Scientists do agree that the magnetite particles are pretty compelling, however, and follow-on research continues to search for natural explanations for such high concentrations of this chemical. In fact, there are still papers coming out, and scientists continue to go back and forth in the literature and at conferences. But do you remember that announcement back in 1996? Scientists had discovered past evidence of life on Mars the President of the United States announced the news. They hadn't, and the announcement was premature, but the public didn't know that. And even so, they were mostly disinterested and busy with their lives. Never underestimate how quickly human beings can become bored of even the most revolutionary discoveries. I can give you even more examples, like the WOW signal in 1977, where SETI researchers detected a signal from outer space that was so strong they wrote the words wow on the printout of the signal strength. 
It was wow strong. It could have been a signal bounced off a satellite from Earth, or a reflection from an asteroid or comet, or it could have been an alien civilization trying to send us one final warning message before their planet imploded. Follow-on observations failed to turn up any other signals. Even today, researchers will turn their radio telescopes in the same direction and hear nothing but static. There's the possible alien megastructure orbiting around Boyajian star, the mysterious nature of fast radio bursts, and the puzzling acceleration of Oumuamua, each of which has been attributed to aliens. But they almost certainly have a natural explanation. And there will be more. Okay, fine, but what if aliens came to Earth in their spacecraft, abducted humans, crashed in Roswell, infiltrated governments, created geometric patterns in crops, and circled U.S. Navy pilots? Wouldn't that be compelling evidence? Well, so far, I'm not convinced that any of this is proof of aliens. They're unidentified flying objects. It's like it's right there in the name. And the results are inconclusive. Until there's a spaceship hovering over a city or an artifact that clearly wasn't manufactured on Earth, I'll remain unconvinced. So when the next generation of powerful ground and space telescopes come online, which are capable of directly observing the atmospheres of exoplanets in search of biosignatures, when huge arrays of radio dishes spanning a square kilometer listen carefully to other stars to hear the signals of advanced civilizations, when there are finally astronauts on Mars who can dig into the regolith and perform sophisticated science experiments in search of life, they're going to make incredible discoveries. But the results will be inconclusive. It'll take years, decades, and maybe even centuries for the truth to be revealed. And that'll give us a long time to get ready both scientifically and emotionally. What do you think? Do you think we'll panic or we'll be bored? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here are the names of the patrons who support us at the $10 level and more. Want to see your name here and support the work we do? Go to patreon.com slash universe today. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story, and links you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com slash newsletter to sign up. And did you know that all of my videos are also available in a handy audio podcast format? So you can have the latest episodes as well as special bonus material like interviews with me show up right on your audio device. Go to universetoday.com slash audio or search for Universe Today on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'll put a link in the show notes. We did a whole video on the history of the Curiosity rover, as well as the upcoming Mars 2020 rover in collaboration with Joe Scott. If you want to learn what they found and what they could find, Check out this video next.